when we get and we are live on facebook uh, we've got oz profit investors your favorite time of the week we bring the big names and the, have the big fun how you going Braden? How, how's your day been mates pretty good today thanks jeff appreciate you having me on you're welcome you're, mate. You're very welcome though you, you we, we, we appreciate you jumping on on and staring an hour or an hour and a half of how long we go of your life so how are you going joe how was how was your day today Mate, my day was absolutely fine. Um, little crazy news about the whole lockdown situation through uh, through throughout New South Wales. So um, I'm feeling for all the all the small businesses that it affects. Um, but at least we know exactly how long it is, right? Rather than extending it out one week and then two weeks and then one week and then it's good just to know exactly what we're going to be in for. Hopefully, it sorts it out. But um, what about you, Jeff? Mate, how was your day? Um, yeah, aside from that, uh, the, the L word, the, the, the L, L downwards, um, no, it was, it was a really good, man. It was, um, yeah, I'm sort of transitioning, learning some new skills at the moment, um, for, for my, for my day, uh, day, day, day job thing. So yeah, just, uh, all about, um, acquiring new skills and just get, getting, um, getting, getting that. And, and it was a lovely day today. I can actually get in, get in some shorts and a t-shirt. So happy days. It's, who would have thought it's winter, um, <clears throat> But, um, but yeah, so that was my day. I was just excited Mate. to do more property. Yes, absolutely. That's why we're here every single Wednesday. And there is uh, Braden here, sensational. You've been a part of the group since like the beginning. Like I don't think I've I've seen you your name like before day us. one. Probably. I don't know. Yeah, it's been a long, <laughs> long time. Um, but it's good. I enjoy it. I appreciate you guys putting it together. I couldn't imagine running something like that. <laughs> but I enjoy just <laughs> talking about something. Run yourself. And- yeah, <laughs> it really runs itself. <laughs> runs itself. Runs itself. No, it's awesome because no, you're always putting on like good, interesting, thought-provoking content, and that's exactly why we wanted to have you on. You've you've got a bit of a property history and backstory that is very uh, interesting. It's not. It's. I mean, it wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's mega left field, but it's also not the norm as well. So it'd be awesome to um, jump in on that one. Um, so should we jump into life hacks? That is that is usually what we do. Should we let our guest go first? Because I, 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 I love him. Yeah. yeah, let's I ask might. him if he's got one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have got one. Um, and I, I hope some people agree with it, but I, I, I reckon a life hack is not buying house and land packages. Okay. Oh. That, be, uh, <laughs> that is a good life hack. Half the audience, the audience of people who, who are selling those house and lands, um, I'll get a couple of direct <laughs> messages, a couple of DMs later telling me about how... They don't, yeah, get the pitchfork set. No, no, I, I love it, Braden. That's a bit, bit uh, spark, sparking a slow free. What do people think of house and land packages and Braden's life hack? Throw it in the comments. Leave us your thoughts on his life hack. Do you agree or disagree? I totally agree. I'm with you, mate. Get rid of them. Get rid of them do. as an investment, as a principal place of residence. Absolutely. If you love your house, you love it, it's the best thing ever, then spend an extra 50, 60 grand on it. But as an investment, please do not buy them. And yes, you can buy. You can get some deals that are well worthwhile and have some great returns. But there was a recent post actually of a guy that did a house and land package just in our group, like last week or of the weekend. Off, 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 off the plan, Mount Mount Druitt. Um, off the plan, yeah. house and land, same same thing. And then well, what was this? What was different. it? One's one's, well, one's an apartment. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't say the same thing, but yes. Um, okay, cool. My life hack. I'm going to jump straight into my life hack because um, my life hack is, is not the greatest life hack that I've had, but it's one where I'm thinking like, what, what is lockdown? What is lockdown? Like, what are the little things that have helped me during my lockdown? The biggest one is having two screens for your computer. So you have like your main workstation here, and then you've got like Slack and you've got like alerts and all of that stuff set up over here. So that is a bit of a shit life hack, but I think it's one of the ones that... I used that one probably about um, – I used that one about eight weeks ago, maybe ten weeks ago. Oh, well, that's a very good life hack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it, it's, no, no, it's great. It's, I, I 100% agree with you. Okay, good. Okay, what are your, what's your life hack, mate? So I, I, I don't know if any, any, anybody's ever tried to convert a, a, a YouTube to a local video so you can actually play it because it's just – Playing for YouTube, where you, where you've got where you work in an environment that doesn't enable you to have that. So I, I, I have a hack. There was a software that I used that was that enabled me to to download that into a local version. I, I, I dropped it into a Dropbox, and happy days. I was able to play it. I was able to bypass the blocker on on my work systems and able to play that YouTube video. So if you ever need to do that, 
do some searching um, and don't don't uh, go and stream it to thousands of people because that's probably copywriting. Um, so this is just for, for personal private use only, of course. Um, I'm not um, back in the limelight, limelight um, what is that, all that sort of Lime days. Wire. Pirate Bay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pirate Bay. Pirate Bay's still around, but Lime is probably dead, I think, and full of full of uh, viruses. So yeah, that's a life hack. So I love love the love the brevity of the session, boys. Let's I'm not at that particular part of the session. We normally uh, take us takes us half an hour to get through the life hack. So well done, Joe. <laughs> kept us on kept us on point. Kept us on point. That's what it's all about today. We're going to be rapid fire adding the value left, right, and center. So that's that's the hope there. Um, now we're going to jump into our sponsored post. So let's just quickly jump through that, and then we will have a nice introduction to our main man, Braden. The person, the person of the hour, Mr. Braden Curry. Scott Agat. You would have seen him on the 7 p.m. project campaigning against agent underquoting. Scott is an expert negotiator through and through. Every single day, he is negotiating with real estate agents to get the best price for his clients. To give you a bit of a background, Scott has been working in real estate since 1995 and as a real estate agent, built up three Bell franchises. He was the guy teaching the agent all the tips and tricks to get the most out of the buyers. However, Scott realized that there was actually no one on the side of the person buying the property and he saw them constantly letting emotion get in the way and paying way over for the property. And that's why he created Hello House, Australia's first property negotiation as a service business where he is on the side of the buyer. In hot markets like we have now, you need absolutely every single edge that you can get. These agents are trained professionals and they are there to get the most money out of you, which is why you need to have an expert of your own in your own corner. The way it works, you find the property, then Scott will come in at the negotiation phase and take over for you. This is how you'll get the property for its true value. He'll ensure that you don't overpay. He comes in, knocks the real estate agent down on price, no more agent games, no more tricks, no more tactics. He is there for you. Scott has been kind enough to offer us an amazing discount on his service, and I've personally just seen a friend pay $20,000 more on a property because of these agent games. Reach out to him with the link below. It'll be the best property investment you will ever make. Oh, that, that, that was amazing, mate. Life, well, uh, absolutely. I, I was just so impressed with the way you delivered that. Um, good, 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 good time. <laughs> so, no, no, Thanks, no, no this, it was uh, it was absolutely seamless. Um, so, good, good, good times. So, and and Braden. So, on to you though. I want to I want to give you the biggest one of the biggest pump ups I've ever given. Anybody, so no pressure on me here. If I if I don't deliver, you can you can fire me if you want, Joe. Um, I'll, I'll hand you my resignation. So, Braden, you were you were <laughs> here in uh, in 2018, 2019, one one of those uh, your investment property articles, and you, you bought three or four properties, I believe it was at that time, and that sort of and 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 the thing I loved about I actually reached out to you after I was reading, and I was like. So you so you sort of bought it. You, you bought and you flipped one in Race View in the in the Ipswich uh, sort of area. I'm pretty sure that the yeah, issue. I was actually looking at Race View on the weekend. There was um, somebody who messaged me and was telling me about it, and I was like, "Great, it's so interesting." So I, I sort of looked at Race View and all of it. So you've done well in that property. The numbers were fantastic in terms of the flip and that. And then you sort of decided to you try your hand at subdivision, and you, you you've added a whole heck a whole heck of equity in that sort of thing. So you've just you've been able to with 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 what with the uh, resources you've had, you've been able to add value and and continue on your property journey. So that's that's kind of why we wanted to get you on because a lot of people say, well, how do you, what do you do when you when you hit serviceability limits and all that? How do you kind of get get around that? So that's kind of why we wanted you on the show. One of the reasons we wanted you on the show. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, I just enjoy the process. Enjoy. I'm not sure I have the, the secret. Like formula to getting around serviceability. Um, yeah. I think, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't have a, a life hack for that yet. Um, I would like to see, um, like vendor finance become more mainstream in Australia. I think that would be pretty interesting. Um, as like, I think there was a stats there from a while ago. Um, Joe, you put up like the equity, um, like loan to value in like all Australian real estate. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was quite low. Like, there's a lot of people that would own their properties outright. Um, in the investing space, we don't talk about or hear about that much because we're always leveraging. But there are a lot of people out there that do have the, that capability. Um, and then yeah. just like if they were to sell a house for cash, but money in the bank, they're really not going to get much further ahead. 
um, if you're able to offer like a above average interest rate on a vendor finance deal, which we did on the, um, the subdivision, um, it really worked out for everyone. We paid up like a, a larger deposit up front. She was able to pay bills and things that she needed to get done. And then there was, um, we had more room to move because we couldn't service it through a bank, but we were still able to do the project. So wow. I don't know how we go about it or, or what, but I think um, last week with Rob, he was touching on their contracts, like going around agents and how they have more flexibility with development sites, but longer settlements, that sort of thing. Um, I think if there's more, it was more mainstream, we could do that on the buying side as well, like just on um, normal buy and hold properties, um, buy, renovate, um, add value. And then really once you own a property, getting finance is so much easier because you can really take your time, shop around, look at a thousand different options. If you've got a 30 day settlement and then you're looking to, um, to get it done so the agent can get paid and they can they can move on, it's harder. We've got to take what you can get. Like you get a broker and they're in your corner, obviously, and they do all the, the homework, but it's just you don't get that much flexibility when you're trying to get it done at a certain time, especially when it's so busy like this. So I would like to see something like that become more, like I guess, well accepted. Um, other things are like just... I uh, listened to some bloke not that long ago. Um, just peer-to-peer -peer lending is a lot bigger, in, um, a lot bigger in the UK at the moment, but it's starting to get a bit bigger in Australia. So that would be awesome if we could see stuff like that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, just got to keep crossing fingers. Um, so, <laughs> the chat we had in the group the other day, um, Joe, your post about like getting past that, like you can't buy forever. Like the 65% LVR come up as like a pretty decent amount and i didn't know that like i didn't know that like really allowed you to go a lot further so that's something interesting worth considering i'll probably look at trying to incorporate that more because yeah I mean, if you throw if you throw money at the problem um i'm not always a problem owning property um you, you can usually yeah there's, there's many ways around it it's just in a case of if you don't have necessarily have the equity um, in the first place, and yeah, which is the probably the challenge where most people get started. So let's let's kind of let's kind of get uh, let's let's take a step back. And Joe has his question, but actually, I think your question works better first, Joe. And then I'll ask my first question. How, do, how does that sound, Joe? You keen? So I think you answered yeah, think about, about books. Um, yeah, I think there's so much to unpack under that. I, I'd love to talk more about like just a, a general understanding of what vendor financing is. Um, and and um, I've got there's there's actually a tech company that is doing something in that space I think I might have a, have a mention about. But um, yes, I see you have a bit of a bookshelf there. So I always like my first question to be, what book are you currently reading? Because I'm um, stuck here, I'm in lockdown, I'm reading a whole heap and I need some more. So what what, what are you currently reading, Braden? I've been a bit slack on the book side of things. I The book I am in the middle of, um, The Trammell Crow, is a biography. He was, um, I think it was the world's biggest or America's biggest developer back in the day. Um, he yeah. basically built Texas which was pretty cool. Um, wow. I just like that sort of stuff because it's just like inspiring. If they if they yeah. can do something like that, maybe I can do something half as cool. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> did, you build, did you build Ipswich, uh, Brayden, or is, it, is that, is no. that the back? <laughs> <laughs> back I can't take credit for Ipswich. <laughs> I don't know if you want to. Yeah, love, exactly. love, you don't want to be... You don't want to be. You don't want to hold that torch, surely. No, no. This is good. Good yeah. stuff. Um. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well. Um. That's really interesting. I. I do love a good biography because it gets your motivation juices flowing on. On that. Um. So what is he? Why is he so special? Why? What? How did? He, how? Why is he so special? And how? How has he been able to build all of Texas up? How was he able to? I don't know. It's hard when you read that sort of stuff because, I don't know, you kind of give them excuses. <laughs> like, you know, like you see them do so well and it's just like, well, what did they have that helped them so much? Um, and it's just like you think about timing and stuff like that. Like, um, really, he was at the start of, like, industrial buildings. That's where, like, the industrial buildings were taking off. So that's where he has basically built right. those spaces, um, that sort of stuff. Um, but he did get into mm -hmm. other things and, and big on partnerships, which I hadn't really – given too much thought to so i'm um, big on yeah. equity splits and and sharing his name and that sort of thing so um creative financing as well but yeah, Interesting. yeah I, think, awesome. I think that I, I i hear and see a lot of that sort of stuff um go go uh, more commonly in the us and and listen to things like bigger pockets podcasts and there's, there's a couple other american ones i listen to and that's um that happens tends to happen quite a lot we don't see i'm um, probably because we're not as big a market we don't see as much of that here in australia yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's it's potent with with prices um, sort of 
are getting to, getting above the million dollars um, around parts of Australia and Sydney, and Melbourne. Yeah, potentially there's a, there's an opportunity for right for disruption. Um, but of course, with uh, with opportunity comes you need to sort of do things, um, dot your I's and cross your T's, um, so to speak, because there's um, yeah, if you do, if you get it wrong, it can go horribly wrong. Um, those type of things. But, um, yeah, yeah that's but a, it also that's breeds a, creativity, right? Like when you're backed into a corner and you haven't got any serviceability, um, you can just say, oh, I haven't got any serviceability. What do I do? I do nothing. Great. That's an option. That's option That's option B for bull crap. Um, option A might be trying to figure out a way, ask the question how or what if or what would this look like if, uh, and then you come up with these crazy options. Um, one of them, oh, there was a tech company that I was talking about just uh, previously, uh, what they do is it's called, I don't want to name the company yet because I think that um, it's didn't, it doesn't work because of legislation. Um, so what it does though, what they planned on doing was an older person would have like a, a property, right? Like exactly like we were saying, someone that's had their property for 60 years, but their cash flow poor, they're, they're asset rich, cash flow poor. So what an investor does, and this person's like, hey, I want to retire. I want to jump in my caravan. I want to travel around Australia and live the life, but I don't want to sell my house. So what they do is the investor then buys a set portion of the property. They'll say, hey, I'll give you 50, I'll give you, you know, $300,000 in cash and you give me 50% of your property. And then the investor has an asset until that person either sells it or moves on. Um, and then the older person gets... 300 grand to do whatever the heck they want. So they liquefy their assets. Um, and I thought that's such a creative way around that thing exactly like the, well, and just a new way to get into the market. I like that yeah. a lot. If you don't mind me jumping in, Jeff. It's yeah, just I, also NFTs. Like I'm not an expert on oh, them or anything like that, but, but smart contracts and being able to tie something to a property and then sell a percentage of. So if you were to, um, with the contract, be able to allocate a token to the property value and then sell a percentage of that, so 50% of that, and then they can sell that, retain their um, ownership, and their half ownership, have the property go traveling, like that, like that's a long way away yet until we get that all worked mm. out. But this stuff like that's exciting because it's, we haven't had anything like that in the real estate space. Um, you hear all these technology companies and, and what they're doing, but we just got to go through banks and borrow money and cap out. <laughs> okay, there's a sneaky NFT called Axie Infinity, but um, not not funny. Yeah, it's um, absolutely going <laughs> going nuts in the going nuts in the crypto market at the moment. <laughs> anyway, so I'll, back to, to my first question, though, because let's let's kind of because he, he, he said NFT, and I couldn't I couldn't help myself. Go so, on. Brayden, tell tell us about your first property. Like, what 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 was the what's the story like? To, tell us about what lessons you learned, and and uh, give us give us all the wisdom that you you gained and learned from. It. Tell us all about it. My first property, uh, I'm not stoked with the purchase now because um, it doesn't quite align with what I was planning to do. Um, yeah. I thought I could okay. just buy, buy properties that made money and then buy more of them. So, like, all I was worried about was return. And then, um, and if I just bought positive cash flow properties, I can keep buying them, make a little bit of money. If there's capital growth in the next, I want to hold them for my whole lifetime. So, I've got 80 years worth of capital growth. If something happens, it happens. If not, I'm making a few bucks here and there. And I could just buy like as many as I wanted. Um, I'd also had the like the goal of buying for like a long time um, at about 10, like 11 years or something before I bought my first one. I've been like working towards it. So I just really wanted one for the sake of it. Like I was like, I want to buy one at this age when I was 18. And then I um, I just really wanted to get one. So, so you bought the, you your first property at 18 or 19? Or no, no I missed it. The goal, was, the goal was 18 and then I bought two at 19. So uh, <laughs> that's a good like that's a good overcompensation. One of you, yeah. So I thought I compensated that, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I just it was just about yeah making a little bit of money and then um, moving on to the next one and the next one. And yeah, and that's probably my biggest lesson out of that is you can't. Um, and that was in probably like one of the worst parts of Ipswich, um, with the lowest um, lowest capital growth. And then, um, but it was decent return. And then it's not subdividable. So now I only buy stuff and hold stuff that's got subdivision potential, but it doesn't yeah. fit that anymore. And because, yeah. and I'm in the point now, I'm like, market's red hot. It's what I'll classify as a, um, I don't know, like not quality property. It's just a bad property. So market's hot. Do I sell it? 
but then the fees and percentage of profit that sucks out of it is like a massive chunk. So if I'm going to lose whatever it is on the purchase side of things and then on the sales side of things, um, trying to weigh it up and it just doesn't sit right with me because it doesn't align with everything else. But at the end of the day, I paid 189 for it. It rents at 300 a week. And I, um, so I make an, and I refinance all my money out. So really I've got no wow. money in it and it pays me yeah. every week. And then so it's kind of hard to argue with, with yeah. holding it. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a hard to justify it. Yeah, well, hard to even though... Why, so, yeah, hard to justify selling. It's not, because it doesn't make sense to sell, like, by the numbers. But then if you look at, like, its contribution to land tax, um, I want to buy, like, other stuff, like Uniblock. Like, so if I look at it standalone, it doesn't make sense. But opportunity cost, like, could I put that money elsewhere and make more with it? So, so yeah. one question I have around that is... Buying two properties at nineteen, what like I was living in a I was living in a van in New Zealand at New, <laughs> nineteen. How did you yeah. get to? How did you get your property mindset to actually go out there and do that? that? I got pretty lucky. I was born into a family that were buying properties, so I set the goal to buy when I was like eight, and I said I just want to buy properties. That's what I want to do. Um, it was funny, like I didn't want to do what dad does for work because I'm like that's what dad does. I don't want to do what he does. But then yeah. he does property, so, but I, I, I bought into that. So um, I just, yeah, set the goal early um, and just, yeah, just saved everything I could. Um, uh, I was really good at saving and worked pretty hard, like working three jobs, that sort of stuff, 100 wow. hours a week. So it was, um, yeah, like there's pros and cons to it all, but it was a goal mm-hmm. and still got more goals around it. So. Yeah. What was your kind of mindset? How did you at eighteen like what what was your diet? How did, what did you consume to to be able to know to go to that way, um, go that direction? I just, getting property for breakfast, lunch, I just, and dinner. <laughs> yeah, no, um property wise, I don't I got I just like I don't buy the same way, like the same strategy that my parents did. So like it it wasn't like a um it was just like, having exposure to it. So like I got to see the ins and the outs and make my own like mind up on what I like and don't like. Um, yeah. So I kind of, yeah, I just said it as just what I want to do. And this is, and I got lucky, I guess, because the thing that I like, I like it without the money, I take the money away. I still want to do it. Like I still want to <laughs> buy and, and, and renovate, add value. Like you just, and it's just, that's how I look at it. It's like basically a sport. Like it's fun. It's competitive in terms of like the dollars just track your progress. So how have I performed this time? Like what's the, how does it stack up compared to what I've done in the past? Um, can I do better than that? Like that sort of thing. So it just it's just literally like someone else might really like music or art. Like I just got lucky. That's what I want to do. So I don't mind the sacrifices it takes to do that because it's my version of fun. Like it's just what. So I don't yeah. know. I got lucky. I guess. Um, in terms of oh, I don't wasn't listening and reading that much. I still don't do too much. I just like conversations with people, but um, I don't really have like you. I don't like my close friends and that. Like no one's really into property. So <laughs> no, uh, neither do I. This is <laughs> this is my property <laughs> circle. Yeah, this is, <laughs> that's why I like jumping on and just having a chat and and talking to people about it. And I don't know. I, I like the discussions. Like I have a very. I got to be careful. Like um, whatever it is, confirmation bias. Like I got like things that I've thought about for a long time, and I think that that's set in stone that what I want. But I just got to be more open to like hearing other people's perspective, which I enjoy. Like that the challenge of seeing it from everyone's angles and what they like and don't like and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to answer Love your it. question. Yeah. No, just yeah. Got, um, so how did you, Um, and, and I don't know, I'm sure Joe was probably might ask this as well, how, how did you actually, because I, I probably know how you did it, but how, how did you get the money out of that property? Like what was the process? What did you I go actually, through to do that? I paid mortgage insurance twice. So okay. I, I paid, I bought 5% deposit. So I paid mortgage insurance and then to get the equity out of it, I paid mortgage insurance again and then got yeah. the equity out and I did a flip and then I made lots more than the mortgage insurance. So like for me, it was, um, and it's still cash flows at 50 bucks a week like now. Um, so that wasn't a, like a problem for me. I was happy to, to do that. Um, so you, must, just, you must have renoed and add some added some value though, because I'm, I'm thinking, how did you actually? What, what are the? How did you get to a stage where you said, okay, you put five percent down, and then it increased in value? Did it or did it grow? What was the kind of? 
it grew a bit. Like I got lucky, so I bought twenty twelve. So yeah. things were pretty ordinary then. Um, and yeah. that's another big lesson from them, like add value. So the first one I bought was just a, the same tenant stayed in there for another eight years after I bought it. Um, yeah. And then, oh, seven years. And then the other one was they were doing up and I just needed to do a little bit of bits and pieces. Like I didn't add significant value, which is yeah. another regret. So that just slowed me down. Like I did, I did, that's why I had to pay the mortgage insurance, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, you, I would always add value now in hindsight. But, um, yeah, so that's now my whole strategy is adding value. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it makes sense now. So didn't, you didn't, didn't, it didn't even do a run. It just grew a little bit and then you said, okay, cool. I'll, I'll, it, it, got, it went from 95% LVR to maybe, I don't know, 80%, 80 or whatever it did. And then you took out yep. a small amount to go and buy the next one. Yeah, and I did a flip and then I made money out of that. And then I did another flip and made money out of that. And then I bought one to hold. So that's just sort of it like it sounds like a horrible deal, like because everyone when I was trying to buy it the first time, I just wanted to buy one, and everyone was like, yeah. "It's a bad idea. Don't pay LMI. Don't don't like do anything." Yeah, and then five percent deposit. Yeah, right. yeah, come, yeah, yeah. So it was um, it worked out like everyone in, in hindsight was like, "That's a great idea," but um, I probably yeah wouldn't have wouldn't have, wouldn't recommend that. But I'm yeah happy with the way it panned out in my case. So. There you yeah. go. Yeah, hundred percent makes it, it makes sense, right? Like, um, so you went from renovating to renovating to renovating. Um, yeah. What made you decide to flip? Like, you you've got to buy and hold. Um, yeah, and you're like, okay, great, next one, on to the next one, um, and let's flip up. I was actually uh, um, become a real estate agent in that time, so I was an agent for a while, oh. and oh, um, there you go. yeah, so I something new, but um, it was. And I just like seen all these properties and, and for me, like being a real estate agent, like it's, it's everyone knows it's about people and I'm more into property. So <laughs> like, it, <laughs> it was like, I like people too, but um, you get, you people get into real estate. Like I got in a real estate thing. I get to deal with property. It's great. That's what I like. And then all you're doing is dealing with people. So not so much about the property. So, I was looking for, a, looking for a way to get into it and I just learned by doing. So I just wanted to, try something new and, and learn about it and, and see if I can make it work. Um, the way I got into it was like, I had no experience, no knowledge. Like I'm it's a landscaper by trade, but most people don't call that a trade. So I'm not that. Um, <laughs> I call it a trade. I mean, who are these people not calling it a trade? But anyway, all the other trades. But, um, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, like I wasn't like carpentry savvy or anything like that. I just, and I think the most important part about flipping is just knowing like conservatively the sale value. So I didn't know trade costs. I didn't know anything like that. I just knew um, my purchase price, which was 212 and then my sale price, which was 330 And I was like, that's what I have to get. Like, oh, um, there can't be – That's just, if I can do that and I buy it for that and I can sell it for that, if I spend less than hundred grand on it, I'm going to make money. So That's massive. That's a massive jump. So what, 212 and sell it? <laughs> For three thirty, yeah, I think I made. I can't. I did all the. I did the stats not long ago, but um, so I made forty five grand on that one, um, and Ooh, yeah, so that was that was like a fun oh. exercise. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. buddy, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, how much buddy. is that? How yeah. much is that property worth right now? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um, the guy, the guy who bought it was a young bloke. And he put a massive shed on it and, and stuff like that. So. Yeah, so what kind um, of what kind of renovation was it? Um, basically, oh, a new bathroom was the main one. New bathroom, new paint, new floors, um, a couple of new walls. It had this really horrible, <laughs> walls. <laughs> horrible, yeah. like you know, open plan or whatever. And then this horrible ceiling. It's like the I can't remember what you call it, but I thought, yeah, you just scrape it off. The popcorn um, the, stuff. The, yeah, something like that. Not quite oh. similar to that. It's like spiky. Um, and then so I just I replaced all the ceiling instead and stuff like that. So you learn heaps. I, I, I liked it because the first of all, I didn't do anything um, to them. So I really didn't know like about what's going on and what's not. But I was looking at this property and there's like a bit of um, the quad in the, on the um, Safit is like a bit dodgy. I'm like, yeah, no worries, easy fix. But then, then you got to renovate it. You rip the whole thing out, the whole thing, full labor, like new material. Like you just don't understand like something that seemed like not much of an expense is more of an expense um so when you do like the renos and that you get more of an in-depth insight rather than buy and hold you just the problems just carry through 
um, and you don't really get hit with them all at once. Yeah, so, yeah I learned a lot through that. Like just just looking at properties in general. So what what are some of the other kind of key learning? Let's stick on this first renovation. What were your like key takeaways from this? Like what what did you learn not to do, and and what did you learn to do better next time? Probably um, the main one was just better understanding of what I'm looking at, like as in what needs doing and what doesn't need doing. Um, mm. yeah, that was just a bit of a surprise. Um, stuff that I thought was easy wasn't so easy. Mm. Um, and are you going there on site, like you just rocking up and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go, I'll get my tool belt and you just chip yeah. it in and then. And then <laughs> and do all that. So I started really keen. <laughs> but yeah. then so like, um, I, I, I was working six days a week in real estate, sometimes seven. So it was tough to get there, but I was doing everything I can. Um, if I take holidays and do the renos and stuff like that. And then, wow. um, but it was, yeah, I realized you learn what you like and don't like. <laughs> it's just, which I think is important because you, you work out what your strengths are and what you'd rather hire out and, and that sort of stuff. So if you're doing what you hate all the time, no matter how much money it makes, you're not going to keep doing it. So um, mm. learn a lot about that. Um, what else do I learn about? Um, the, the, I think the biggest value add you can do is a bathroom. Um, in a in a one one bathroom to a two bathroom, um, bathroom. two bathrooms. So one no, one bathroom to two bathrooms. So adding an extra one. So um, because yeah, so, so, so for me though, did you? I'm um, sorry, kind of, but I'm I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of it and and I mean yeah. So I'm I'm kind of. Uh, I mean, looking at it from the perspective of knowing what I know now, if you if you'd have gone to Jeff ten years ago, I wouldn't have known to kind of ask the question about the arts. But one to two, one bathroom to two bathrooms. Did how much research did you do on the demographics? So we had Taryn Baldwin on a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and she sort of said, "You got to know your demographics. Like, what do they actually want?" So did you did you sort of say, "Okay, this area has like I don't know, it's got families with, with two kids or three kids. They're going to yeah. need a second bathroom because if you've got if you've got two kids racing around, they're not going to and, and you need to use a bathroom. And there's one already using one bathroom. You're like they're in there for ten minutes. So did you yeah. do that?" Did you go that far to do that or just got to kind of gut feel it? Gut feel it. Like I gut feel a lot of stuff um, probably because being in real estate was handy. <laughs> I, I get to like, I get to see a lot of stuff, but like in terms of bathrooms, it's just like, I just think that most people have two kids these days. So the fourth bedroom isn't a requirement and stuff like that. You look at like any, like in a Brisbane, in a Sydney, in a Melbourne, the houses are tiny. Like they're just like, and then people are happy living in them. Like they're just small and, and that's fine. So you don't need, like, we don't need single, like, like I mean, couples with no kids living in a full bed, two baths. Um, so I just think that like just people like the second bathroom and the who's buying the house is the parents. Like the kids aren't buying the house. So what do the parents want? They want to have their own space for a bathroom. Um, and I always know my who I'm selling to. So I'm always selling to a family because that's an emotional buyer. So that's my target market. So I just always add a second bathroom. That makes sense. So what is um some of the key in values that that being a real estate agent helped you, you know, as an investor? What are some of the key things that you took from that? I think it was mainly just confidence on price. So like right. just just like just seeing hundreds of properties and and price and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it just become easy. Like I, I've only ever bought first day on the market. Like I mean, first I think I bought. Everything, as soon as I see it, I buy it. Like, I've only ever made first day offers. Um, I don't think about anything like, and then also on the sale price, um, just knowing that you have to, what you can get. Because, and it's being like negative, pessimistic. I'm pretty pessimistic by nature, um, which I think works well in this case, like scenario. So, you just work on everything yeah. that can go wrong, times by two. And then if you still make money, happy days. Murphy's or Mur Murphy's or Braden's law. Any, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so take us back, take me back to something that you said you only make first day offers. So are you saying that if you make an offer on day one and it's not accepted, you're moving on, you're, you're not even no, bothering. Sorry, I, I've muddled that up. So I'll make, I only make, like I'll always make an offer the first day I see it. Um, yeah. And then uh, you just jump head first in. I just, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, because everything that you, when you decide and you're only ever looking at the property to make sure it ticks, the, like isn't worse than you thought it was. Like you should, and most of the time you should know before you get there what you're looking at price wise and and if there's any yeah. different like variations when you get there you change it but um yeah and I've, I've paid like I'm happy to pay full price over list price like I, you don't I don't think you need to be and people put too much emphasis on like paying less than what it was listed for like mm. um like it's not like would you if there's a market if there's a property in the market 
and you bought it 200 grand under list price, but the list price was 500 grand above market, like that doesn't. Have you, have you actually got a discount or have you just paid, have you still paid 300K more than what you should have? Yeah. And then, and then, but I, I've bought a couple first day on the market full price and it's just, um, I don't want anyone else to buy it. I know that I can make it work for that. There's no reason for me to try and risk it or, or miss out or, or whatever. So, and I also yeah. don't like, I don't make a lot of offers. So I only look for something that comes up. If it's, if it's in the ballpark, I'll make an offer. Otherwise I won't. So. Yeah, that's yeah. actually that's actually a really good insight. Like, um, make it your price. I don't care, Mister Real Estate yeah. Agent, what your price is. I don't care. But what the real market and what it's worth to me is yeah. X amount of dollars. So if you can get there, I'm happy to get there. If you can't get there, then I'll find someone else. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I never argue market price. Like, sure, they can probably sell it to someone for more. I'm not trying to pay about. I'm not trying to pay market price. Like, I'm just saying this is what it's worth to me. If you want to sell it to me for that, I'll appreciate it. And if you don't, I don't blame you. Like it's just there's no point uh-huh. trying to get in get into that discussion uh-huh. with them, and then it just becomes a like an ego thing almost, like trying to prove a point. And it's just I just want to move on. So yeah. have you have you have you ever had uh, have you ever had kind of what happens when they say oh I've got another party interested at, at I don't know 200, 220, and your your offer is two ten? Are you are you kind of saying no, my offer is two ten? Are you kind of are you sticking to your two ten or are you? Are you budging to 215? Like, what's your... It depends um, what I think it's worth. Like, most of the time, I won't... Um, oh, so here's something that I, I like to ask. This is my favourite question. When you're about to start a negotiation, ask, well, how would the seller like to... Would they like to see the process or would they like my best best offer? So some... Because some sellers, they want to see you come up and think they're winning. So they want to see you, like you know what I mean. Like they want to, yeah. they want to see them drag you up from that low price to their. Yeah, price. bit of theatre. They want, they want to haggle. They don't, they don't just, yeah. they just want, they don't want to reel the big fish in straight away. They, they, yeah, they want to, they want to struggle. They want to kind of feel like they're going to lose the fish. That, yeah. So that- then there's other people on the other side who are like, I don't want to hear about it. Just if we're going to sell it or not. Um, and then, and then, so I don't want to be going in with a low offer when someone just wants to sell it. Um, and I don't want to so be what, what was your question what was your question again oh um what would the, what would the sellers prefer to see the process or like a best foot forward so do you think they need to see the process of me coming up in price or would you like me to give you my higher price now um, <laughs> and then and I've had people say both they'll say like they'll say oh, I'd like to see that the seller's going to want to see the lower offer start at the lower offer and then they're going to appreciate you coming up and then other people then, say, no, I'm, I just want to – That I'm very direct with them. They're direct with me. They don't want to play games. Just give us your, your number. And then I'll just do it that way. I, I actually really like that question because um, – and, and it's not so much about the answer that they give. It's more well, – I mean, yes, it is about the answer. But it's, it's more about, well, how, how, how do they you, – you're actually kind of asking – you're asking the person what they want. Um, mm-hmm. So then you can kind of – you can and, and I'm sure the real estate agent won't just kind of – because a real estate, you've asked a, you've asked kind of a question, an information gathering question. Because I'm yeah. sure you won't just get that; you'll get all other sorts of things. You might they might say, "Oh, okay, the settle." The, you might find out, "Oh, like how quickly they need to, do they need to settle, or, or are they kind of are they waiting so they need to buy somewhere else?" And if they if they say, "Oh, <laughs> if they say if they want to know the process," or can I can do you mind if I ask more about why they want like to learn more about the process? So is it because they need to, and then you can kind of you can build a bit of rapport because then you then you're actually giving the real estate agent what they want, and and. and because the real estate agent is the person who who's going to take the thing to the right. offer. So that's actually yeah. a really um, kind of non-confrontational question. I mean, it seems quite direct, but if I'm asked that question, I'm like, oh, cool, actually, yeah, I'm just going to throw out an answer to that question because it, it's not it's not something. Yeah, so it's actually but if, uh, if the seller hasn't set up, if the agent hasn't set up for this is a hot market, you're going to get a great offer straight away. They just mm-hmm. panic and then they just don't want to. They just think they undersold it, so then they reject it. Like, so it's mm-hmm. just yeah, whatever suits so, them. I- what other kind of questions do you have? <laughs> that was a bloody good one. <laughs> oh, I just wrote my good one down for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, um, just the good one. We, 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 wanted, we wanted the process, Braden. We didn't want your best offer first, and you gave us your best offer, so you didn't yeah. ask us what we wanted. <laughs> That's right. I should have asked. That's all good. That's all good. I thought I'd throw a sneaky one in there. Um, okay, cool. So we've we've done a buy and hold. We've then been like, you know what? I can do some flips here. I'm a real estate agent and I know all the numbers. So let's let's get rolling with that. Um, you did two of those. Um, you blew out, made extra bathrooms. And what, what happened after that? 
Um, not too much, actually. Sort of hit the brakes a bit. <laughs> Serviceability become. Uh, <laughs> oh no, sorry. I did buy. I bought another one. Um, buy I uh, buy Renault Hold. So yep. I finally got one to suit my like on subdividable land. Um, the suit and um, cash flow positive suits my goals. Um, yep. so I'm happy to get that one and park it to the side. And then um, just more recently we did the joint venture development that was with the vendor finance, and it was just a one in the two subdivision. It wasn't complicated. Um, yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, so can you go into more about like, before we go into that joke, should we run our, cause we're at the 40, should we run our second sponsor and then kind of really dig because I can feel we're going to start digging and then we're going to forget our second sponsor. Should we, should we do that? We would, ne- we would never forget our single sponsor. Never ever. Mr. Mr. The, the, the Steve Polizzi. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really, it's yeah. working. Oh my Lord. It's going to work. Gotta work it. Oh, you're a machine. Oh, God, hang on. <laughs> he spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon on this one, but now. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's talk about commercial property investing. It's one of those areas that confuses many people, probably because of the risks involved, but it's yeah, also yeah. one of those asset classes that can give you a very positive cash flow from day one. With commercial property, you get some massive net yields of 6 to 10%. Now, that's not gross. That's net which means it's cash in your pocket. This is what makes them so amazing. Your property can actually pay itself off within 10 years, grow in value, and without having you to chip in any cash at all. Now, with big rewards comes some big risk, which is why you should de-risk your investment as much as possible. The way you do this is with expert due diligence. This is why we highly recommend hiring professionals to help you along in your investing journey. Steve Polisi of Polisi Property is one such expert. He is one of Australia's top commercial property buyers agent with his own multi-million dollar property portfolio of a mix of commercial and residential. Steve has over 1,200 property transactions under his belt. He is the guy you want in your corner, crunching the numbers, finding the best properties in the best location, along with the ways to avoid the dud properties. Steve has even been the one to write the book on commercial property investing in Australia, and it's a bestseller. He's been generous enough to give us a massive discount to our audience of 50% with the code OZPROP. Click the link below, get a copy today, and start your commercial property investing journey. There you go, Joe. Well, well done. You recovered, recovered, recovered strong. So that was um, – and, and I just I, – I, I had took a sneaky at the comments. Somebody said, Joe, you, you, you sound like I so well. You saw it, did you? You sound like what? Keith Urban. Keith Urban. What an honour. <laughs> well, no, Keith not. Urban on the show. Why, why not? See, I'm sure he's, a, he's, he's down in Nashville, so he probably owns a ranch or two down that way. Good old Keith. Yeah, he's an Oz, so, He's definitely an Oz property fan. That is 100%. <laughs> I can see a meme coming. Anyway, so so on to, on to the uh, onto the subdivision. We're we talk, about to talk about subdivisions, aren't we? Next. Next up. Hmm. Yeah. Just talk um, about subdivision. Talk about it. Um, I think it's. I think uh, this is my distinction in subdivision. This is a lesson I learned. So I did the subdivision in Ipswich, where land values are uh, lower uh, lower than house value. Like uh, the house itself is worth more than the land it sits on. Generally speaking, how, how, did, how, did you, um, how did you find? How did you find that out? Did you do research? Did you look at kind of um, state like valuation sort of, a, of in the area? Like what? What was your tactic Not to gonna do like that? It. Gut? No, I'm joking. Um, it's just, <laughs> um, just what you see, like land, what it sells for by itself, and then what you see with the house on it, like just um, okay. big, big yeah. gap. Um, but places like <laughs> Brisbane, where land is worth more than the house, um, that's where you do your land value add. So, yeah. Wow, that's that, that's that's actually because there's, there's a bit of, and that's where there's there's uh, property is not necessarily a perfect market. Because we, we kind of like it, like the share market, for example, and I'm not saying shares are better than property or vice versa. I'm kind of just saying like in, in theory, the share market is considered a perfect market, whereas property, you don't have all that. Like people don't know that, that land is worth or land is generally worth more in Ipswich than, than what it is in a house. So that's kind of that's a, a bit of an insight. People um, should take that down if they want to uh, add so what's value. The, so, so what's the insight? You want a property? You want an no, area so- that has... Yeah, so you if you're doing uh, land value add through a subdivision, you want to be doing in areas with higher land value, so in a city stuff. But if you're doing renos, which improving the value of the house, you want to do that in an area like a 
lower demographic like Ipswich where it's got a higher property value. So if you add 50% to the house and uh, um, value to the house, you're actually increasing a larger portion of the overall value than if you were to do it to land, if that makes sense. 50% increase the value to the land is yeah. less, less impactful. Awesome. Okay, great little insight. Love that. Um, and and from the sub- subdivision side of things, you you did that one in Ipswich as well. Yeah. So that was the lesson that I probably okay. wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't do it again. Um, yeah, I think there is it. some there's some room for if you're um, subdividing and building on and retaining yourself, um, there's equity to be built in there. But I'd be looking, yeah, more to um, yeah higher land value areas if I was still another one. Yeah. And in terms of um, actually doing a subdivision, so like buy and hold, like buy and hold is here, renovation is here. Subdivision yeah. is like, it's a big leap. It's a big jump to make from here to there. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I had a great partner on it. So this is the first time I've ever done a joint venture deal. Um, and he's done plenty of them before. So someone I met through real estate, which I guess is a, a pro for real estate um for selling houses so he um he's done plenty come across the place and then wanted obviously more cash and then so i was able to provide the other side of the cash um and then we did the vendor finance deal which got through our serviceability issues and then he was really took the lead on the development so i was more just watching and learning and observing than than doing which is what i prefer to do so yeah and how was the experience like um from a from a a money partner because that's essentially yeah. what what you were obviously a hands-on money partner to learn the ropes and all of that you were thoroughly involved but yeah. how was that experience um cancels are a pain <laughs> i learned that <laughs> um, the, what, the council the the councils yeah um, um, you've got you've got the brisbane is it switching brisbane council still no nah, it's its own special oh, so. yeah so special um, nothing happens fast obviously like like most councils i guess but um yeah there was just some logical decisions that didn't go our way um they went by the book rather than logic so yeah we yeah. were I guess account for that later we also did it was a smaller frontage um which we thought there'd be no so 10 meter frontage which we thought it'd be no worries with because obviously 10 meter frontage everywhere in inner city and stuff but then no one out here wanted to touch it because it was so weird and strange and unique so yeah, you didn't, didn't the buyer or so the buyers were interested buyers, in, in, buyers okay. were interested yeah no worries doing the subdivision but getting someone interested yeah. in buying and building yeah was that, that was 100%, yeah and, that, and that, that's kind of my my takeaway if, if you build it's not a case of building it or subdividing it or or renovating it and they will come if you if you renovate um and add two bedrooms to, in an area that's that that's got um so if you've got a five bedroom house that you've you've added two extra bedrooms to in an area where you've got um double income no kids as the majority yeah. of people you're not going to sell that house you'll sit there for you'll sit there for two years or well, maybe two years, but I'm being dramatic. But it'll yeah. sit there for ages. If you give, if you give a ten meter frontage in an area where people they love the big, big front yards and whatever they want to be able to do whatever they do in the front yards in, in these areas, um, and you sort of say, okay, well, you give them exactly what they want. And and it's I've learned that myself through through my own projects. And and luckily we we, we built exactly well, pretty close to what the demographic wanted in that area. Um, so yeah, yeah, no, the other way. Project, did, did you realize that sort of at the end as you were selling them or did you kind of did you realize that when you couldn't sell them off the plan like what was your sort of no that was when we went to sale so we went to sell them like when COVID hit like the first time where everyone was like the world's actually going to end um not before everything went crazy so um we launched them then which was a pain and then so we had a, a couple of months where it was just everything was down and then everything picked up like all the builders packages coming out like the the grants and stuff like that sorry um, so we thought we'd be laughing and then, so we saw one and then the other one just took a lot, a lot, um, a lot longer. And then the, yeah, we, it is a couple of different issues, but yeah, that became the main one was the build. People didn't mind the front, like the size, but it's just like, they thought it was going to be too difficult to build on. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So you, you, instead of, um, cause this is what I like about subdividing, like is that it's like an out, you can do renovation, you can add value in that way, you can then subdivide or you can put a house on it. So what you did was you had a block of, I don't know, how many, how many square meters, 800, 800. square meters. Yeah. Perfect. And then you just chopped it down the middle pretty much and 400, 400. And then you yeah. sold off the land for somebody else to build on yeah. themselves. Yeah. 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 That's right. So we knocked the house nice. down um, and then sold oh, you off knocked it down? Knocked it down. Yeah. So yeah. it was. Would you um would would 
moving forward, would you would you do it in a way where you keep the house so you don't don't have? Um, I suppose you, you you didn't have a loan on it, so you didn't have holding costs. No, so well, we had holding costs a little bit because it was vendor finance, so we were um, paying the oh, vendor. Just, um, yeah. So, but um, yeah, the knockdown wasn't uh, the main issue, um, so wouldn't have a problem with it again. But listen to Rob last week. I'd rather be, um, I think, doing um, build to rent like multifamily, um, like multiple stuff. So that's yep, where yep. I'd rather be. So I think I'd just, um, yeah, take all the experience from it. And then, like, I wouldn't mm. not do something that makes money, but um, I think I'll just lean towards that way in the future. So the personal preference wise. Yeah. And so with the, with the, um, that deal, you bought a house and then knocked it down to sell land to somebody. Yeah. So yeah. Why did you, so why did not, why didn't you just cut the land off and then just sell that land and then sell the house? The property in the middle of the you, you could you have to move the property to one side because it's not. Yeah, you have to do that, and then also just um, running services to a battle axe block and then driveway and stuff like that is more expensive. <laughs> so um, you don't have to do that if you get all street frontage as much. I don't know, Jeff might call, call me out there, but it's just. Um, oh, no. Yeah, so just running the yeah running the services and the, the driveway and stuff like that into a battle axe, and then the back block's usually worth less than the front block, um, and there's a few factors. So, and it was an asbestos jack that was well and truly gone, so there wasn't like the cost like you wouldn't buy it as a Renault on its own. Um, yeah, it wasn't worth it. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'd love to talk about the vendor finance side of things because now that this woman, so you've gone up to this lady and said, "Hey, yeah. I really like your place." Um, yep. was it already on the market? Like, did it, did market, she reach yeah. out to you? Like, give us the, give us the, the go through on the market. I had three contracts fall over on it. Um, so, um, at, at different prices. So we said, um, oh, the partner, my partner come in and said he'd buy it for, um, 180 was the purchase price. Um, but we needed her to finance it and then, um, the agent was interested, like it was just a bit something a bit out of the ordinary. So, um, and we had a good relationship with the, the selling agent. So, um, they were able to make it all work on that side of things. She had a couple of things she needed. She needed um, 40 grand up front. She had, uh, she wanted to spend some money on some certain things she had to spend on. So, we were able to give her that deposit, which covered her near future problems, like just what, what she needed to cover. And then we were able to, instead of paying her out, cash and then it going in the bank and earning whatever 0.7 cent or whatever um we were able to pay her five percent interest so it worked out better for her than holding in the bank and worked out better for us because we couldn't get servicing um yeah a five percent loan for a private it's essentially i'd call i'd almost call it private funding it's not really private funding but um it's yeah private that's the private fund that's that's super cheap i mean uh, even a third or a fourth tier lender um, that's roughly the rate you're going to pay um, for, a, for a buy and hold. So, yeah, so very creative. I just, want to, I just want to understand this. I'm, I like to play dum-dum, and sometimes I like to say I like to play dum-dum pretending that I'm playing dum-dum when I'm actually just dum-dum. So um, you've got this lady, and she says, yeah. hey, I want to sell this house, and contracts have fallen over, and you then come up and say, hey, I, we can buy this place for $180,000, um, but you have to pay for it. You have to be the one that allows me to come in to knock it yeah. down. And then um, she'll say, well, yeah, that sounds really good. I don't have any mortgage on this place. I own it 100%. Um, I don't really have any cash right now. So how about I'll let you do that and you give me $40,000 right now. And then um, at when we when you guys sell it, uh, I'll then take uh, the, the, the rest of the money yeah. out of 5% interest. Yeah, so she gets uh, she has she holds the mortgage on the property. So if we don't make repayments, like all the agreement, we don't make. I think it was one yeah. repayment or something. She can sell it on us, um, and then yeah, we just direct debited her the, the income, and when we made the first sale. We paid her out in full, so we were able to pay her out at any time um, without penalty. And then wow. um, those are good terms. Good yeah, terms. it would. Yeah, so it worked out pretty well, actually. Yeah, we need a little bit longer than the terms. So, and she was great about that. So, um, we had another month or two on the terms. So, did you um did you throw in some penalty interest on top of that? Like, how did you what what did you say in the contract if you went over? Or what, I mean, yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember that detail. I think it was just if we uh, if we took longer, like the longer than the term, she was just happy to continue the way we were. So we oh, just asked, yeah. we asked, do you mind if we just keep going the way we're going? We haven't been able to sell them yet. Um, and and she liked it. So we had a lot of, like, we dealt with her directly a lot during the process. 
So having yeah. that relationship and then she knew that we were acting in her, like we weren't acting selfishly. Um, mm. She actually had another experience with something that went pretty bad um, that didn't go well. So she was comparing us to that. Um, and she was just saying, we like you guys and what you're trying to do. So you, were, make- you, were good, you were a good cop. You had somebody else go in there and and, but, and, and absolutely cop, cock it up and then Braden, uh, Bra- brilliant Braden comes in and saves the day. You're, so you're where, did my- this, where did this lady live for... How how long was the, actually? When did you buy it? And then when did you? When was the Ooh. deal complete? Secret. <laughs> um, long time. So I think it was um, twelve months for the finance, like the first first run, and we needed longer than that. So um, we had it. I think we had the subdivision done by like at that time around that time. Yeah. Um, and then we were trying to sell it from there. It took us another twelve to get rid of it. So. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what was the lady like? Where was the lady living? She moved had- back with kids, so yeah. she was living in the house. Um, and then so she moved back with the kids, and then yeah, it was just starting fresh again, sort of thing. So, and the house was yeah. like, yeah, it was wasn't Ready in great nick. So for her to try and get it back to great nick, it wasn't going to be worth it for her either. So or anyone. Yeah. yeah. This is what I, I love about know. like sure. these type of deals. Oh. It's just it's just solving problems for people like. Realist, you can get so bogged down in the numbers and look at the deals and look at this and I want to make this, but no, it's a person that has something that you want and you guys can work together and come up with a creative solution that works for that person and also yeah. works for you. And then there's a little bit of back and forth on, well, actually, I need 40 grand because I need to you know, pay rent and I've got to help the kids and blah, blah. Cool, nah, that's no worries. Let's, we'll sort yeah. you out. We can do that. That's a part of the deal that we can do and everyone's that's happy. A, like she had contracts, higher prices, like obviously the ones that fell over were for higher prices, but um, she was happy with the way that was worked out because she got what she wanted. Like I think the only two things we really have in negotiation or two or three maybe is at the moment with through an agent is settlement date, which it can be 30 days or 60 days basically, or like building a pest clause or not. Like there's not a whole lot of that. There's no like the, the selling agents just like, we're, we're going to sell the thing and we're going to get you the most money possible. And then, but then it doesn't solve their problems. So they got Price conveniences experience. and stuff. So yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's a lesson regardless of whether you're buying a, a fifty million dollar commercial property or whether you're buying a, a two hundred thousand dollar property that you um, that you're going to do as a project, or, or even if it's a four hundred a, a million dollar property in Sydney, you, you can learn a, a thing or two from from what Brady just said. It's it's really just about figuring out what that person, what the other person selling the property needs or wants. Um, and if you can if you can figure out a creative way to make that happen, um, then you may be able to sort of yeah come come to an agreement, create a win win win, and get the agent on board as well. Tell them that hey look if if uh, if you do well here, we'll give you the property management, or we'll give you I don't know if you're doing a flip, then you can, we'll give you the the sale. We'll look to give you we'll consider you for the sale on the way out. So it's kind of how do you appease all parties? Not appease, but how do you help all parties? It's just tough at the moment when the market's this hot and you can't talk to anyone except for make a full price, no condition, <laughs> or oh, a 500 grand over list and then... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of building, building. I mean, I haven't... Uh, I mean, we're, we're about to um, get get in, get in the market a little bit ourselves, but um, it's it's really, I suppose, about... Um, I imagine it's, it's about building those relationships at the moment because the, the market will turn and when it does turn, um, you, you'll, if you might miss out for six months, for six months, but then when it does get, get become more of a buyer's market, who, who do you think the agent's going to pick up the phone and say, well, hey, look, this guy was, was patient with me. He wasn't sort of um, being, being a dick to me during when it was a seller's market. So, yeah, I think that's... Um, <laughs> doesn't help. It doesn't help you now though, Jeff, does it? <laughs> I know, but- I'm, I'm helping future Jeff though. Like it's sometimes right. we, we, we all want we all want everything to happen today, but um, yeah, of course I we like want it. everything to happen. Sometimes we've got to delay gratification. Now I know we had a lot of um, listener questions previously, so it'd be cool to rattle off some of those for the guys in the audience that are watching this. Um, big Keith Urban fans, obviously. Um, <laughs> can you throw in throw in some of your questions for Braden. He's done he's done quite a number of property deals, and this is the awesome thing. Like I like. I like having, you know, Chris Gray, right? $20 million property portfolio, an absolute savage who's at the end of his, you know, property buying journey. But also I love having people that are in the, like this is what the weeds look like. You know, what his problem, what Chris Gray's problems were 20 years ago, That that's not real. Your issues right now is servicing. Like how do you overcome that? Cool. Well, let's get damn creative. Let's get some vendor financing going. Let's come up with creative strategy around that. I'm loving it. 
thanks man that's this no, has been really you. good so any questions that you guys have pop them in the comments because it's a big topic i feel like vendor financing feels like a big topic but when you break it down so easy it's like well it just yeah it just makes sense it's just like, oh, it, I, I, I just i just got to bring this one up so apparently he laughs like keep urban as well <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what he looks like. Here. So I'm, I'm going to bring the comments up. So now I get to look at it's. Uh, I've, I've got my guilty pleasure. I've resisted looking, um, but while no, we're getting no, the there's question, yeah, yeah, there's no comments in this like this one. Well, I'll have a look through, but there's not too many. The doc, um, the I, I mean the, the other comments. Yeah, the document one. Oh, I've, I've got all the questions in there down, down the bottom. So I don't yeah, know which one. Yeah, um, I, I can I can read them, but um. Before we get into some audience questions, or while we're getting so people, we've got we've got a good audience watching along. We've got uh, so what? What do people want to what to ask some questions, Braden? But I want to know, Braden, what what does your next deal likely going to look like? Is it going to be another vendor finance? What are you what are you looking at next while we wait uh, for things to come through? I'm open for anything that'll fall together for me at the moment. <laughs> um, I, I like vendor finance. I like unit blocks, and I like flipping. So I want to build big deposits. Um, I'm a big fan of the most important thing in in investing is the amount you invest. So like if you if you've got if you're getting a ten percent return on a million bucks or a seven percent return on ten million bucks, you're better off like that. So I'm just trying to get as much like increase my income, um, increase my deposit size, and just buy bigger properties, have bigger exposure to the market. So um, yeah, probably flip until until um, unit blocks would be my my plan. Until which? Uh, until when? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Until I can get into unit blocks uh, with the bigger. Oh, deposits. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because um, I mean, yeah, we, we do have a question. I think it's it's probably it's probably Denise uh, who is has been an absolute. She's a superstar. That's uh, just. Uh, it's okay. It is Denise. So I think uh, I think we're going to have to give her a special award one of these days. But uh, no, she she loves throwing questions. But um, well, I'll bring her quick because she she asked that before the show and she's watching along to get it answered. So, um, but but why not just get into unit block now? What what is what is the limiting? Why can't you just do it now? Just just kind of just figure out how to make the deal work. Just do. Exi- I mean, I don't know. That's what that's kind of what I'm thinking. Why wait? What's the what's, you do you yeah, want to buy it? No, it'll be yeah. Buy buy renovate hold. Um, it just be uh, conversations with owners of unit blocks, I guess. Um, yeah. So if I can just talk to people who own them or people who know people who own them and they want to do something like that, um, doesn't Easy, have to man. be uh, go and, like go and, go and go and go and knock on the go and knock on the Strider manager's door and say, hey, look, do you mind if I, I'm very curious to know who owns these owns these blocks? Um, can I find that out? Like, can you put me in contact and and then say, hey, look, I I, I know that this property needs a bit of work on it. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to. But that's that's no, why I, I like go. It. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Make it happen, yeah, mate. But I mean, you've got to be able to afford. But you got to be able to afford the bloody thing, right? That's like, yeah, Braden, you can go in and buy. You can buy. There's a you know an eight pack. You can buy one of those. Mm-hmm. But what you're talking about is buying it on wholesale and buying the whole chunky whole block at a and discount. then renovating the whole thing. And then renovate mm-hmm. the whole thing. Oh, yeah. here we go. This ties in nicely with a um with a question we've got. Have you done any renovations with tenants in it? If yes, yeah. what kind of reno was it? So if you were renovating an eight block. You would have to. You would have some tenants in there. How would you kind of manage that? I don't know if you've dealt. Well, have you dealt with that in the past, or, and how would you manage it? No, I haven't. A- um, I've only done. Um, uh, I've only done like sort of between or before tenants. Um, mm-hmm. So I haven't done it with someone in there. Um, I the you just be end of leases on a on an eight block. So it's going to take. You're not going to jump in and smash it out in twelve months or anything. Like it's going to be as every lease expires, you jump in and do one. Um, yeah. How, how do you do them with with it's tricky with people in there um if you're trying to just save money on no downtime um you can probably incentivize the tenants like a discount in rent or something like that to come and make a bunch of noise and, and have trades it's hard with um write-offs people i think try to renovate with tenants in there to get a tax deduction but if it's actual renovation it won't count it won't count as maintenance so maintenance is tax deductible but like new bathrooms or that sort of stuff. As far as I know, I'm not an accountant. Is that yeah, is not? Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's that's, not that's, deductible. So, yeah, yeah, it makes because it, it has to be kind of in the in the in the purpose of, of gaining gain, gaining rental income or, or income producing. But, yeah, yeah, I think I, for I'm me, sure. yeah, yeah, sorry, I was gonna say probably more headache than anything for me. Like it's just like there's probably some pros. 
but the amount of pros versus all the cons is probably not worth it. Um, yeah. This is my personal view. I, I, I agree. I, 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 Joe, have you done any Renault's with tennis in it? No, I wouldn't. I, well, like I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but yeah, I would just I would just get the person out and just I don't know maybe like crunch the numbers. Is it going to be worth <laughs> buying them out of their lease? Hey, can you just can I cut it now and you go or I'll let you in at the future date and it's going to be a brand new renovated place. You're going to love it. Um, I should charge you three hundred thousand uh, three sorry three hundred dollars a week rent. Um, but I'm going to charge you two fifty for the next two years. How about that? Or the next year, or whatever. Like financially, it works out as. Or send, you know, give them an Airbnb for a while. I don't know. You'd try and come up with something, but I wouldn't have them living in it while it's happening because that would be a bloody nightmare. Well, it's yeah. a nightmare for everyone because you're going to delay the process. You're going to the t- tennis going to be like, well, yeah, just not fun. Um, yeah, oh, that was that was a good discussion, boys. So uh, this is Denise's um, question. The um, and her question is if if I have if I had a hundred k to invest, would you recommend two small investment properties or one bigger? Um, so a big disclaimer: we're not financial advisors, we're not accountants, yada yada, um, all that kind of good stuff. This is not personal advice, but, but um, yeah, what are, what are your thoughts, Brayden? Generally speaking, um, I'd probably do one small one and do a reno with the hundred k. So um, like a hundred k for a, if it's all deposit and there's nothing left over for value add, I would turn it back and get something smaller and value add. Like only, I think the only way to invest in real estate is value add. Um, and mm. so that's the, way, that's the way I'd go. Um, in terms of the actual discussion, like the argument of one bigger versus two smaller, like regardless of money, um, I like I look at net net yield. Like what's it going to – people, like that's all that really matters for me is what the return is going to be. People say you lower your risk with two. But like a million dollar property, like that's not really high risk. Like, or a five hundred thousand, or seven hundred. Like, like if you've got one ten million dollar property and nothing else, maybe that's high risk. But I just think if you're buying a property for whatever that'd be, eight hundred grand, yeah. um, you can't really go too wrong with that. So. Yeah, and you've got to you've got to balance the cash flow of it as well, right? Like one 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 million dollar property is going to be yielding at three percent, whereas two five hundred thousand dollar properties can be yielding at four five percent. Maybe the net cash flow after that is going to be a bit, little bit higher on the two five hundreds, um, yeah. but I love the 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 idea of like yeah buying one and adding the value as much as you can. Do it via renovation or subdivision because, like as we're starting to see, like it's hard out there to make a lot of money in real estate, and the way to do it is to add value on the way in, and yeah. then have more value that you can add on the way out. Like a perfect example is my um, renovation deal that I did. Bought it, 280 on a subdividable block, um, renovated it, got it refinanced um, at th- a, a year later, blah, 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 uh, 369 or whatever the number was. And then it's still there. It's I've got my deposit back and it's subdividable into the future. So it's then value right. in and then value out. I've got more into it as well that I can that you can pull out, which is, um, yeah. Yeah, the other people uh, argument people try and make is like the one million's like higher um, capital, like more capital gains than the two five hundreds or whatever. But like, um, like if you like lower yield, higher return, if you know what I mean, like inner city stuff or whatever. But like you got total total return, are you? Oh, uh, total yeah, growth. Like capital capital growth. Yeah, capital growth. Um, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, but like, I don't understand the point, like, of capital. I don't know what it means, but like, if you can manufacture it, like, wouldn't you do that? Like, what's the difference between adding the value yourself and then waiting for it to go up? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. there's no, there's no difference. It, it, it comes down to active versus uh, active versus passive investing, and a, a, a lot of people they want to they want to see the capital growth, but they also don't want to do any work for it, right? So mm-hmm. they kind of think, well, I, they they want to have they want to have every they want to have they want to be millionaires and they don't want to work for it, right? I mean, that's that's kind of why it's like, oh, you buy the more expensive property. And, yeah, but um, I, I, I'm, 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 more in the, I'm more in the team Braden, add value, um, and, and whether it's 500K, yeah. whether it's million dollars, happy days. It doesn't. Yeah, I, th- I think that like the, the funny thing, like a share market, like the more passive you are, the better the returns are long-term in theory. Like day traders, like it's all active, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean and the property is the opposite. Like, I, I never think thought of that. that. <laughs> you got to be active. 
because it yeah. didn't make it make it happen. So. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like the uh, it's kind of like that Warren Buffett thing, right? And and uh, where where he was he he made that bet with some hedge um, hedge fund managers where they he said, hey, look, I'll, I'll put I'll put X amount of money into each, into index funds, and and I'll outperform you guys because I won't do anything. Whereas the hedge fund guys are trying to. They're, they're trying to do like fancy trades in and out of Apple and and Facebook and and Ark Investments and and all those kind of yeah. people probably don't know Ark, but um we, we actually had another question come through. Um, I think this is a question. There's no question marks though, but um, it's from Jerry, a long supporter of the show. Maybe we need to get Jerry on and one if she's keen to have a chat because I know she does some deals around the place as well. She said, "Your first DA when you provide the finance, how hard was it to partner with somebody who would teach you the ropes?" Um, Great question. question. It was it was easy like for me. They came to me, so that was that was I got lucky, I guess. Um, and they're someone that I would have gone to them, like if it was the other way around. Um, so it was just like mutually perfect. Um, yeah. So I don't know how to be helpful, but probably just I guess the more people you know in the space, the better. Um, yeah. Like people are always going to like are looking for money. Like that's probably the most like requested thing in property is more money um so if you've got the money you can offer it and you've probably got a little bit more leverage there um because there is so many people wanting money and less people giving it so if you were to say like bring me on this deal but i want to learn the ropes so the part of the deal is you show me everything yeah um, and it, it's, it's kind of that upfront, upfront conversation you say well and, and then if, if they're not willing to do that then you say okay that's cool i'm, I'm not the joint venture partner for you yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know how you'd write that into a, a JV agreement. It'd kind of be, I don't think you'd be forced. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, um, you could just ask them. So, would you do a joint venture um, with your best mates? Um, is this guy a super close buddy of yours? Is he a family member? Um, but, like, what I'm trying to get at is, like, how far removed because I don't know if I would want to do a joint venture with a family member, for instance, or yeah. a really like a really close That's friend. Fun. I think I think I could do it, but a um, family member, I don't know. It's kind of like it's money. It's yeah. yeah. It depends. Like I'm I'm like I'm a bit similar, but I'm trying to get away from it. Like I think that money is money, and if you know what you're doing, I, I like if this is if I'm um, doing the deal, like if I'm in control. This is yeah. the way I'd handle it. If I, if I wasn't in control, like if I was going with them, I probably wouldn't do it. Like if I was yeah. out of control, I, I wouldn't go that close. But if I'm in control and yeah. um, I just think that, yeah, if you're going to, if you back yourself to make money, wouldn't it be nice to help your family and friends make money as well? Um, but I also like the pressure. Like I, I like the idea of having to do better, not just for me, but for someone else. Um, so, I, yeah. I, yeah. Um, I, I know what you mean. Like, it's just a weird, and money is a weird topic, and I, I don't think it should be, but it is. And yeah, I don't know. I like, I'm big on um people getting what do we call it, a guarantors early on. So I didn't get a guarantor with mine. I could have got guarantors with my purchases, but I pride and ego. I was like, nah, do it myself. So that way, no one can take it away from me. But at the end of the day, I would have bought earlier. I would have bought more, and I'd be a lot further on. Than Eighteen I, two months instead of nineteen. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I would have well, got like service ability. I had the deposit eighteen. And service ability was my issue, so I was making like eight bucks an hour landscaping. So that's like, I'm big on um, doing that. So that's a family thing that I think is all right. But that's there's also a lot of people that wouldn't, I guess, have the same attitude and behave the same way. But for some yeah. people, it's about get into a property and for other people's about making money like i just want to make money with it um yeah. if i was taking a, a help in just so i can live comfortably in a nice house i probably wouldn't take that yeah it's a rational decision and you've just got to yeah. make make sure that everyone's on the same page and understands that try and remove as much emotion from it as possible it's just when the deal goes sour or when someone like what karen was talking about and they want to pick the tiles do you want to do all that yeah. stuff you just need to lay out that relationship right at the beginning this is what you yeah. do this is what i do I think there put in, must be put in writing, put in writing, yeah. and, and and then if there's any disagreements, it's like, well, here's what we agree. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to, I'm not going to go against the agreement. This is what we sign, um, and then have a dispute resolution in, in place. Um, I, I wouldn't, um, yeah, if you're going to particularly with family, but yep, go on, Joe. No, I wasn't going to say anything. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, we've got time probably for one more question. Uh, if if we don't, we'll, I'll, I'll give it uh, give it another minute, and otherwise, I'll, I'll pick a question from our document. 
Um, I think we've answered uh, some of the questions. So yeah, the the audience seem to be. Actually, I've got a I've got a question for you, Braden. Um, is around the you you were saying at the beginning, like I want to do this a pride and ego. I want to do it all myself. What was the mind chef shift? How did you go into now being in a partnership with somebody? Um, oh, sorry. Um, mine was the first one was mainly like a leg up from family. So this this one was more um, a relationship that I was bringing. I guess uh, I don't know. Good question. So from no, my point no, of view, like I mean, like yeah. I, I I have the similar kind of thing, right? Like it's just no. This is my property journey. It's yeah. not your property journey. I'm going to yeah. make the money, and it's going to be yeah. me doing it. And then all of a yeah. sudden, you're like, wait, I can buy a let's just say a five hundred a three hundred thousand dollar place. But if yeah. my, my friend who's really good, we could both get. 150,000 and we could do three yeah. of them in a year instead of one. It only makes yeah. sense. But how do yeah. you kind of, I don't know, was there a pivotal moment or were you just like, actually, shit, this just makes sense. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I hadn't even, it didn't even cross my mind to be honest. Cause I thought like, just, yeah. um, I was wanted, yeah, I just wanted, like I was bringing money, the same amount of money to the table. Um, yeah. and then he was bringing the, I just wanted to learn. So yeah. I was just like, it's an active learning exercise. So I, I'm happy to do it, but yeah, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm in the same opinion. Yeah. I want to do it all myself, but, um, mm. I'm and, trying to let that go. But. And did you do it 50-50 down the middle based 50, on the revenue yeah, split? Yeah, yeah basically, okay. yeah. So it was just the whole thing was like... Um, that's inter- that's a very good for you because he's yeah. running the deal and looking after it. Like, no. And it was just, it was it was perfect in theory, like um, our relationship that we have and it's our relationship is property related. Um, yeah. We're not, I guess, it's just that's, we met through property right. and we know each other yeah. through property. Yeah. So... Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um. No. So it, it was pretty perfect, and then but he also wanted the control of the situation the same way I would doing a joint venture with someone else. So yeah. um, that worked out well. So he got to have the control of the whole scenario, make sure it went to plan, rather than me taking the reins and who knows what would have happened. But <laughs> did, did, how um how 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 deep did you go in, in terms of your due diligence on um on his track record? Like how many deals had he? Did you go pretty deep on that? Oh, uh, no, I've, like, sold, like, to him and for him and stuff like that when I was an it's agent. Kind of right. Yeah, so he did He did one the same side, but he built one and, and kept um, the street over. So he did the same side. So the same, same he didn't even need to ask him for his fees, though, because he knew exactly what he sold for and what he bought for. You so sold like, for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. So. That's kind of that's probably a unique one, but um, like in, typically yeah. though, if, if you were to do something with somebody, you, you'd not not ever you'd not you want a real estate agent for yeah. them. You, you, you dig deep into their past deals, I'd imagine, and and do all that kind of the checks and balances, make sure everything's checked out. Is that what you well, the, the process? Yeah, yeah, I probably wouldn't do one like that again. Like I wouldn't do it with someone else in control. Um, I don't ever do it if I was in oh. control. It's so just say so, because yeah, um, you've learned. I know what yeah. I'm like. My, I, you know I know what it's my criteria and stuff like that. So I'd back myself yeah. to do it. But if I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't go that way. There you go. So I think that might that might have answered um, Jerry's question in, inadvertently. Like, so we're answering a question now. Even having to ask them, but she asked, "How many times did you do joint ventures providing finance for your confident do the development side yourself?" So I think you've you've done one of these pro, one of the development projects, I imagine, and and a couple of sort of Renault flips as well. So yeah. so you probably you've done a couple of projects. So I I think so you you come you're confident and comfortable enough doing it yourself now. Yeah, I got pretty big goals in terms of property, so like this sort of stuff just part of the process. Like it doesn't feel like a big deal. Like as in in my head, what I'm capable of doing and what I'm going to do is yeah. a lot more than this is. So like it just, well, it's just like, it, yeah, it's just like um, yeah, um, yeah. It just it's just a small in comparison. So it's I don't know. It's just like you if a professional soccer player in your head and you go to the local club and kick a footy. That's what it feels like. But I'm not. But actually... I bet you, I bet you the first time that professional soccer player played A grade at a local footy club, he's probably yeah. like he's probably really sort of nervous and anxious because so it's kind of like the first time when you buy your first property, right? You think, oh crap, now I've got a two or three or four hundred thousand dollar property, um, mm-hmm. and it's just it is it is a bit nerve wracking. I don't know. I, I felt that the first time, but did you feel that, Joe? Yeah, but I, first... I think I think um, the true value of what Braden is saying is like this is a small stepping stone of where his larger oh, yeah, goal is. Yeah, yeah. And that this is like, I need to get to this point. I need to hurry up and move along. And like, that's lighting a fire under you so, so much to be able to, like, okay, cool. Yep. Okay. Let's move on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Um, You know, you know, you know, I'm similar, Joe. We're both similar, you and I. Um, So, yeah, big question 
will Braden pay it forward and teach others the ropes? Uh, I'm sure he probably will. <laughs> he's, he's already teaching. He's teaching in the group about how how some this needs may to not be. be a, this needs to be a product that like developers do, like as no, a no. Uh, like not a product, but like it, it is. You know, hey, if you want, you can get a five percent return, a ten percent return. If you want the ten percent, you get no education. If you want a five percent return on your cash, oh, you get the full yeah. education, and I'll yeah. have these ten points here. Yeah, oh, mate, Jeff. Let's talk offline. We've got some. We've got some creation to do. Um, <laughs> but that's a, that, oh, that okay. makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm you, happy to help yeah. anyone for ninety-seven dollars a week. Um, ninety-seven dollars a week. Do I do I do I get some knives, steak knives thrown in as well? No, no, <laughs> no, no. What are you doing? You're not giving me. You're not giving me the the, the add on. Come on. <laughs> no. not, you're not a cup coach, no. No, so, no, um, I, um, before we, um, if you're comfortable talking, can, can I ask, and you, you, can, you can handball this one and say you, you don't want to answer it. What, what are, I mean, you said you want to buy unit blocks. Um, what is your kind of really big, um, your BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal? What do you want to, what do you, what do you want to do? Um, I'm, I want to do, I have intergenerational wealth. So I want to set up like all my future generations um, forever. Yes. So that's just my thing. Um, I don't know why I, I just, I'm fully able body wise and reasonably able mind wise, and I think if I just <laughs> if I just give it everything I got for as long as I can, it, it, I can get a long way towards that. So yeah, that's shit. my that's my thing. So yeah, that's big. Cool. Now you were joking yeah. about that ninety seven dollars, weren't you? Yes, yes. No, I I just like talking to people about property. So uh, yeah. um, reach out. So send, reach send, out. Send, him a, a okay, so send him a DM after this. I mean, he, um, we love promoting DMs here in the group. No, we don't. I'm just, <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no smoke, signal. smoke signals only. Yeah. Um, awesome, Brayden. Is there any kind of um, thing that we haven't covered off um, that you wish you're like? Ah, oh, actually, I did want to talk about this a little bit. Nothing. Okay. I just need to have a chat. So I didn't really have an yeah. agenda or anything like that. So I just appreciate yeah. you guys chatting to me. So. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, uh, good. Really appreciate you um, being being. With, I think you were probably in the top, uh, the first 100 members of the group. I don't. I could probably look it up, but I'm not going to do that because it's just too much time, effort, and energy. Um, we, we need. Yeah, no, I, like if we could look it up, but yeah, you're in the first I'm 100. Up, yeah. I'm not, sure. I'm not looking and, up. Um, I, I kind of want to now, but um, yeah. So you're the first. So really appreciate you adding value over the, this last year, year and a half, and just um, just coming along. With, with us for the journey and, and just keeping an eye out on, on making sure there's not too much kind of spruiking going on and people DMing and whatever, like absolutely amazed at how many people help us do that. It's um we really appreciate it. So keep doing keep answering questions and helping people out. Um and um yeah, we will see you um when you do your unit block or we'll hear about it and all that sort of stuff. Yeah man, we'll, we'll have to have you on. You'll have to give us the blow by blow, the play by play. Big, big deep dive. Big deep dive. Data deep dive. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Anything else we need right. to cover off, Jeff? I feel like I always, admin-wise, I always mess it up. I'm always like, okay, see you guys. And then you're like, hey, well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. All good. good. Loved it. Awesome. Okay, cool. Let's go buy a property, guys. See you later. Thank you, Thanks very much. See you. See you. Stick on if you want, team.